Uh, welcome everyone to today's session on combining hospital interventional approaches to improve patient outcomes and increase hospital efficiency. Before we start, I just wanted to remind you that this session, as well as all the other sessions, are available. Uh, the recordings will be available on IHI's website, as well as the links are available on the B2Match platform under the agenda. If you want to ask questions during the session, you can use the chat function on the right side of your screen. I would like now to give the floor to my colleague, uh, Colm, who will be doing the presentation. Okay, good morning, everyone. And as Rui said, welcome to this webinar. Um, my name is Colm Carroll, and I'm a scientific officer at IHI. And in this webinar, I hope to uh, inform you of three main things. Um, first of all, for those of you who are not already familiar with IHI as a program, I'm going to briefly introduce the organization and what we do. And the idea behind this is to make sure that when you put a proposal together, you're addressing the objectives of the program as well as the objectives of the call. Um, then I'll talk about the, the, uh, the topic uh, uh, that we're going to discuss today. And finally, I'll spend a little bit of time talking about how to how you as a potential applicants can put together the best possible uh, consortium and submit a good proposal, which should be evaluated highly. Just to mention, I'm not going to go into detail about rules, procedures or budgets. Um, we have had some webinars on these earlier in the week. And as Rui said, the recordings are now um, on our website. And if you follow the link there, you will find them. So first of all, what is the Innovative Health Initiative? Um, so um, the basic point is that we are a funding agency and we fund collaborative health care projects in Europe. And each of our projects is actually a public private partnership. So our, our projects are co-funded. Um, some of the organizations in a project are funded by cash contributions from the European Commission. The other part of the project are actually uh, organizations falling on these healthcare industry associations who bring their own resources to a project. And the idea behind uh, IHI is that by combining forces between publicly funded organizations such as hospitals, uh, universities, uh, maybe regulators, small and medium-sized enterprises, and some in big industry players, we can do things in healthcare that would not normally be possible. And our general objectives reflect this concept. So through cross-sectoral pre-competitive collaboration and cross-sectoralism, including everyone involved in the healthcare ecosystem, we hope to turn the latest research and innovation into real benefits for patients and society. And this is one message I want you to understand when you're putting your proposal together. All our topics, all our projects should be focused on um, outcomes that will reach patients. Maybe not in the lifetime of the project, but there should be a pathway after the project finishes for how this will happen. Um, our projects will cover the entire spectrum of care, uh, prevention, diagnosis, treatment, cure, and we're focusing on areas where uh, that are not already well addressed, i.e. where there's an unmet public health need. And also being a public-private partnership, we want to make sure that Europe's health industries remain and become even increasingly competitive in the world. So this particular topic falls under what we call a single stage uh, procedure. Um, this is a call and evaluation procedure. I want to give you a little bit of an overview of what this actually means and why it is important for you to understand this. So obviously the call is now launched and you can see the documents on our website. So this phase now is at the proposal submission phase. And that is where you as applicants will put together a, a consortium, uh, together write a proposal and submit it to us. And under proposal submission, you will see the typical type of organizations involved in, in a consortium. And here I've particularly highlighted 
private partners and contributing partners. The reason for this, and I'll come on to this later on, is that every project must have approximately half the, the, the budget for that project coming from these organizations bringing their own resources. And we call these private partners or contributing partners. The other organizations in the lighter color um, can apply for the funding, can receive funding from us. Um, the stage after you submit your proposal is this eligibility check. And there are a number of checks that happen here. The most important is this funding, matched funding we look for. So at the, the rule is actually at least 45% funding coming from uh, organizations contributing their own resources and 55% of the total project funding can then come from, from um, IHI funds, although we work on a matched funding, so 50-50 is what you should aim for. If you pass the eligibility check, then you enter the evaluation where we invite external experts to look at every proposal and pick which, which are the best ones to be funded, and then they go through to the project phase. Towards the end of the webinar, I will uh, describe a little bit how these experts work, because it's important that you tailor your proposal to what the experts are expecting. Okay, so um, moving on to the topic itself. So as Rui said, this is about combining a hospital interventional approaches to improve patient outcomes and increase hospital efficiency. So I'll start with the, the challenge that this topic aims to address. So I think we all already know that uh, people who undergo procedures in hospital, obviously they have a recovery time afterwards to get back to normal life as, or normal life as possible. And there's a lot of new novel treatments available. Um, which have the potential to you know, speed up this recovery time, allow the, the patient to go back to their normal life faster, uh, release resources in the hospital. However, there hasn't been much work on studying the, the combinations of these novel treatments um, to actually achieve this objective and improve patient care. So the question is, can we find better ways of combining these treatments to improve outcomes for patients and increase the hospital efficiencies? Under the IHI public-private model, what type of organizations do we think we need to address this particular challenge? Um, as I mentioned at the start, IHI projects should all be focused on having impact on patients. And therefore, we firmly believe that uh, getting the views of patients in a project is crucially important. There's no point developing a nice uh, technology that the patients are, are, are not interested in. So having the voice of patients in the project is important. And of course, healthcare professionals who are the ones who will deliver these interventions to the patients as well. Um, obviously, researchers working in the field, be the academic or industry, are important. And there's a focus in this particular topic, and you'll see on demonstrating the value of these new approaches. Again, this is about ensuring that they can be taken up by the, by the healthcare systems and therefore will have that benefit that we expect. Those managers or procurers in hospitals who uh, are in charge of what gets taken on board are important as well. And then technology developers, uh, people who already have technologies which may be combined here, or people who maybe take what comes out of the project and develop a little bit further so they can have uh, the impact we want. This is just a, a concept. It's up to you to bring the organizations you think you need for your particular proposal to a consortium. Um, so. I should have said at the start that the um, the call topic text is actually the, the, the reference document you should refer to. So in these slides, I'm just taking a subset of the of the, the items in the call topic text to give you a flavor of what the topic is about. So if this interests you, you must go to the call topic text. The reason I say that now is because uh, the scope in the topic text is much uh, is much more detailed than what I've, I've picked here. Um, but the first item of scope is to obviously to demonstrate how these existing hospital interventions can be optimally combined to achieve the impact that we want. And maybe you need to do this by accessing a lot of data which is already existing from from um, uh, from these from instruments or from interventions already in place in hospitals and analyze those. Um, 
with this data, then, of course, you will be looking at developing uh, algorithms uh, to help combine them effectively. And at top of this, um, I think on the next slide, I've got a, a little bit about training programs, which these algorithms should help feed into. Um, the first bullet point here is about the demonstration of how these technologies can improve patient care. Um, and the, the importance of this is, uh, as I mentioned before, we want to have an impact. And for that impact to be achieved, the people who need to use these tools, the people who need to purchase these tools, um, need to know that they offer value for, for their, their individual hospital. So it's important that it's not just a research project, it's about demonstrating that what you've developed is useful in, this, in, in, in various settings. Um, combined with demonstrating how the tools would work, then demonstrating the value will work as well. And this is where perhaps the, the, the health economic aspects come into it. And finally, um, as for all IHI projects, we are aware that we are not working in, in, in isolation. There are other initiatives out there who are perhaps working in a similar field. And we think it's very important that you um, don't reinvent the wheel. You, you learn from others and where you can contribute to others, you do so. So we think it's important to reserve some resources, a modest amount, to explore synergies with other relevant initiatives. So what are the expected outcomes from the results of these projects? And I should say that outcomes are kind of medium term effects. Um, based on the results of the projects. Um, so what we want is obviously the, the project to generate evidence on the, these treatment contributions, and those can be taken up by, by others. Um, one of the outputs we would want would be improved clinical decision support systems. The so project should work on those, and, and uh, maybe after the project, they can be taken up again by, by, um, by hospital systems. And then there's evidence on the cost effectiveness of the treatment combination studied under the project. And the idea here is obviously to demonstrate that these can increase hospital efficiencies. Then impacts, impacts are perhaps longer term um, results based on, on the project. Uh, and these are things perhaps the, 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 the project has a result, but maybe some further work is needed in that result to achieve this impact. In the project itself, it's important you understand that and that you, you map out how these impacts can be achieved. What are the next steps that are needed after the project finishes, perhaps, for these impacts to be achieved? And you will need to demonstrate that you've thought about this in your proposal, and it's one of the aspects the uh, evaluators will look at. So the impacts we're looking at here, obviously, we want to um, improve patient outcomes, you know, get faster patient recovery. Um, we want these, whatever is discovered in the project, to be actually implemented in, in the hospital. And, um, this may be perhaps demonstrated in, 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 in a small number within the project, but we want it to be scaled up outside the project afterwards. That's one of the pathways we'd look at. Obviously, we want the treatments to be, to be, be, be given to be optimal for the patient, so we get better treatments. And perhaps you know, some of the, the results of the project, I think there is a research element we want to look at to inform future research so that future treatments, future interventions can be developed as well. And those people um, who would do that work uh, need to be aware of your project results, which leads me on to my next slide, which is about dissemination, exploitation, and communication. And I just want to introduce the concept here of the IHA project as a catalyst for what comes next. Um, so it's not a standalone project, which has got a beginning and an end, what comes after the project is sometimes even more important than the project itself. We need to be to deliver for the patients. Um, and therefore, you really need to think about how that can be achieved. Um, and one of the ways that is achieved is by making sure the people who will carry the next steps are aware of the results of the project, um, the results are relevant for them, and that they have a pathway through to how to use those results to bring them all the way to the patient. So we want you to reserve a budget for the effective dissemination and communication plan and already start thinking about our resources needed for the work that happens after the project and maybe think about how those could be um, uh, obtained. So think about maybe an, an early business plan as well. 
in the topic text, you will see there is a particular request um, for a strong communication and outreach plan. And as I mentioned, uh, we also want the publication of a gap assessment, which would help guide future research in this field so that would, uh, others can develop um, interventions based on the results of the project. Um, so, brief slide on budget and uh, duration of the project. So, first of all, just to say that total public funding, I'll emphasize public funding available for the projects funded under this topic is 30 million euros. We expect the projects to request between 8 and 10 million euros of public funding each, so hopefully fund three, three projects or so. Crucially important, and I'll emphasize this again, is that for the total cost of the project, public funding, private funding, 40, at least 45% of that total budget of the project must come from these um, in-kind contributors. So IHI private members, which I mentioned at the start of the, of the webinar, or contributing partners who are other organizations who want to bring their own resources to the project. This is the legibility criteria I mentioned at the top. If you do not have at least this 45%, your project will not even be evaluated. So it's crucial you, you get on board on your consortium organizations who will bring these, these in-kind contributions. On duration, um, we just say that it's up to you to propose a duration that matches the objectives of your uh, proposal. And this will also form part of the evaluation. The experts will, will look at what you've chosen so make sure you, you choose a suitable duration and you justify why you've chosen uh, that duration. So I've got a few slides now on uh, proposal submission, evaluation, and then a few tips as well. So I'll start with the proposal submission. Um, so the, the submission is based on a template which is made up of various different sections. And um, before I go through the slide, I'll just say that the call is open. If you go to the uh, Horizon Europe funding and tenders portal, you'll be able to download all these templates. And I, I would suggest that you do so straight away so you can see what the expectations are for you. Um, and you're not leaving some elements to the last minute. So as I said, it's made up of various different sections. So part A is um, mostly administrative data entered in web forms. However, what's quite important here is their researcher data, the, the, the people who will be carrying out the research in your project. This is important because the evaluators will look at this during the evaluation. Then part B is the narrative part, and this is based on a template, which is a Word document. And this is split into three main sections, excellence, impact, and implementation. Our advice to you here is to read carefully the guidance and instructions in the template document. These, these guidances have been written on purpose to help you put together a proposal which will address all the questions the evaluators have. So it's very important to read that carefully and try to answer everything in there. And then there are also several annexes which you need to complete. Um, some of them are mandatory, some of them are optional. Um, these are on the participant type, uh, some budget details on your, on your proposal. If you're carrying out clinical studies, there's a separate clinical studies template to provide more detail on those. And there's also a coordinator declaration. And this is a declaration that you have at least 45% um, in-kind contributions, just again to emphasize the importance of that point. So once you submit your proposal, um, we do this eligibility check, and if that passes, it goes through to the evaluation. So I've got a couple of slides just to let you know how the evaluators do their work. Again, so you can tailor your proposal to meet their, their, their needs. And what we do with the evaluators is, is we provide them with a criteria against which they will evaluate the proposal. And I'm not expecting you to read the, all the detail on this slide. It's, there's a lot of words here, but these are the evaluation criteria that they have. And I've highlighted under excellence this first sub-criterion. And the reason I've done this is just to explain what instructions we give the evaluators. For example, we will ask them the question um, on your proposal, 
are the objectives of this proposal clear and pertinent? And we'd expect them to, to provide a comment on that. And then we will ask them, um, to what extent is the work in the proposal ambitious and goes and beyond the state of the art? And we'll ask them to comment on that. And we'll do this for all of these criteria and sub-criteria, specific comments on each of these points. Therefore, it's important for, for you to know that it, you know, in your proposal, you make sure you make it easy for the evaluators to find the answers to these questions. And I'll come back to the, the guidance in the, in the template. This guidance is written to, to do exactly this. So if you follow that guidance well, the, the evaluators will have an easier job, which means your proposal should score higher than it would otherwise. And you will see here also these criteria exactly match the headings in the proposal template. So excellence, impact, and on the next slide, you'll have implementation. So these slides are available afterwards and you can get a better view of, of these um, criteria then. So my last few slides are on some tips for you on how to uh, find collaboration partners and put together a, a good quality um, proposal. So first of all, as I already mentioned, this the topic text, which is the reference document to which you are applying. Um, so you should read that, read it carefully, read it several times. It's available at that, that link, and which is uh, on our website. Um, it's also crucially important to put together a credible consortium to address all the objectives of the topic text. So you should, if, if you haven't started already, you should start to form your consortium now, straight away. And we have a pitching session following this webinar to help you do that. When you're forming your consortium, you should make sure you're capturing the full elements of the public-private partnership. This is why we are different from other funding programs and you should take advantage of that. There's a lot of great expertise that normally comes to a, a, a project such as under IHI, and it's, uh, it's, it's up to you to, to fully capture that expertise and, and put forward a strong proposal. I've mentioned several times already, I'll say it again, these in-kind contributions are an eligibility criterion, therefore you, you, you must have them. And this third point, I'll reiterate again, make the expert's job easy. Give them all the information that they're looking for, both in the call text and in the proposal template. And one thing we look at in, in IHI for all our topics is if there is something that needs to go through a regulatory process to have the impact, i.e. Um, reach the patients, then please already start thinking about that when you're writing your proposal. You can res put resources aside, maybe form a regulatory plan, have a deliverable and regulatory implement, um, implementation. So a slide on finding those project partners, which are crucial for you to uh, put together a credible proposal. Um, obviously take advantage of this platform that we have now. Um, arrange a meeting with uh, anyone that is, is, is interesting to your needs. And my next slide goes into that in a bit more detail. Um, attend our pitching event. There is also a partner search tool on the European Commission funding and tenders portal. Um, I think our our platform is probably the first place to go to, but I would also upload my details there and use that as a search for, for others. Um, there's also uh, for most for most states in the pro member states in the program, um, national contact points whose job it is is to help you find um, suitable partners and and put together a credible proposal, a credible application. So I would invite you to reach out to your to your local national contact point um, for help and advice. And finally, of course, that our projects are quite often based on networks. You know, getting the right expertise and is, is quite a you need quite a broad network. So make sure you do network on social media, your own social media. You can use our social media as well. Um, so yeah, so I'll, just a quick uh, slide on the, the B2Match platform and how to do the matchmaking there to find your consortium partners. The best way to do this is to book meetings with other interested parties. So to do this, you go to the meetings tab and it's in the top right. You click on meetings, click sign up to one-to-one -one sessions and that allows people to contact you and you to contact other people. Then under the participants tab, search for the expertise that, that you need click request a meeting, fill in the details, 
add a, a suitable message, spend a bit of time thinking about what's the best message and send a request and hopefully you'll get your meeting. There is a step-to-step -step guide also available there if you need it. We also have a pitching session later today. Um, and this is where organizations who are trying to put together a consortium um, want to share their ideas against the topic text. So I would definitely encourage you to attend this session, um, listen to what they have to say, and then you can contact them using the, the meeting functionality. So I just want to finish this is my last slide and just recap on some of the main points which I think I, I, I want you to come away with. First of all, you need to put together a credible consortium to address the topic text. To do this, you must be proactive. Don't wait for people to come to you. You must go to them. Um, crucially important, identify those partners bringing these in-kind contributions so you meet that eligibility criterion. And if you haven't started working already, start straight away. Then once you have a consortium, obviously you have to put together a proposal. Our advice here is again, read the call text very carefully. When you're putting your proposal together, make sure you're addressing all the items in there. Follow the guidance in the proposal template. It is written on purpose to help you put together the best proposal possible. And to achieve the impact that we want to achieve in IHI projects, make sure you've really thought about sustainability, what comes after the project and communication, make sure that the end users of your results know about what you've done. So I'll stop there and invite you to uh, put questions in the chat functionality and we'll um, try to answer them all now. Before I do so, just one thing to say that um, I've, said, I've said already, but the call text is the reference document of which you're addressing and it's also the reference document that the experts will use to assess your proposals. So I'm not really going to answer questions about interpretation of the call text. It's up to you as a, as a consortium to demonstrate to the experts that what you're proposing fits under the call text and also meets the needs of, of the of the um, or meets the objectives of the call. Thank you very much, Colm, for your presentation. And uh, as Colm mentioned, if you have any questions, just use the, the chat function. We also have our legal team on the call, so we'll start answering some of the questions that were already asked for uh, some of the attendees. <clears throat> and the first one, I mean, this question was already addressed in some of the other presentations, but I think it's important that uh, we answer it. So it's, um, are US partners eligible for EU funding as beneficiaries or contributing partners? as they are in Horizon Europe health calls? So US partners can become contributing partners. These are people who bring their own resources without any problem. They should contact us if they wish to do so. Um, US partners would not normally be eligible for funding. Um, however, there is an exception, and this is very, very, very exceptional, so it's not normal at all. That is, if US or any other partner outside, uh, any other country outside the program is bringing something which is essential for the carrying out the work that's proposed, then we can provide an exceptional funding. When I say essential and exceptional, this means something that we could not be done in Europe. So if there's someone in Europe who could provide the same resourcing, then we wouldn't fund a, a US partner bringing this, for example. Thank you, Colm. And our next question is, uh, again, this was answered in the, some of the other webinars. I uh, advise you to watch also the recordings to have the full scope on the finance and on the rules and procedures. The, but the question is from Jose, and his question is, with regards to the funding, the 45% of the budget provided by private sector, is it the 45% of 8, 10 million euros expected per project? Can you please confirm this point? So first of all, let me address the eight to 10 million euro range. That, that is our su suggested budget. You know, you, you, can, you can deviate from that, but you would have to justify why you were doing so. You know, and the further you deviate, the stronger your justification would have to be, and the experts would have to assess that. The 45% is actually from the total project budget. So say, for example, if you're applying for 10 million uh, of public funding, 
I think your total costs for a project to should be around then 18, 18 and a half million, which means eight and a half million would be private funding or sorry, in-kind in contributions and a 10 million would be um, public funding. So the, the 10 million expected is the public funding only. I should say that this, um, as a public-private partnership, our model is matched funding. So ideally, you'd have 10 million public, 10 million in-kind, or so for total budget of 20 million. We've we've reduced it to rather than 50 50 percent, we've reduced it to 45 percent, and that is just to allow a little bit of contingency in case something goes wrong, um, because it's an eligibility criteria. So I would really aim for for matched funding. So 10 million public, 10 million in-kind. Thank you very much, uh, Cole. The next question is, um, it's regarding the, the call texts. So, uh, Tomislav's uh, question is, call text states the specific obligations describing the conditions of the calls and calls management rules under specific conditions on availability, accessibility and affordability do not apply. Can you please explain what this means? So, so this does not apply so in, in you don't actually really need to know about this however there there is a program for some calls not for some topics not this one where if there are some important results coming from clinical studies there are specific conditions for uh, based on those um now these don't apply here i would if you're really interested in understanding this more i think it's in our uh, faq or our, our our guidance to applicants which is available on our website the important thing for you to know for this particular topic is they don't apply, so you don't have to worry about them. Okay, great. Thank you, Colm. And our next question is from Magojata. In order to confirm and provide the cost efficiency of the solution, is it necessary to provide clinical validation? Is it possible to plan in the frame of the project work package dedicated to the clinical trial assessment? Are the costs of clinical validation illegible? So, so maybe I'll take the last point first. Are the costs eligible? The costs of the work carried out in the project would be eligible as long as it's meeting the objectives uh, of, of the project itself. The, the other, I will say, it's, it's very much up to you to demonstrate that the work you're planning to do um, fits under the scope of the topic, bearing in mind that the evaluators will assess this. So again, I'm not going to kind of give advice on what to put in a particular proposal, the specifics. I would just say that if you can demonstrate that what you're proposing um, is fits under the call text and 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 is, is of high quality, then you should be successful. But it's up to you to really demonstrate that to the evaluators. Okay. Thank you, Colm. And uh, still related to the um, to the proposals, would it be possible to provide a more detail on the expectation of proposals to explore the synergies with other projects? Um, so. This again kind of depends on what you're planning to do yourself. I mean, we, we all know that we don't we don't work in isolation. We're we're not here, you know, there's a lot of other work going on, either funded by Europe or, or national funding or even in industry funded. And I think our intention behind this is more about a making sure that you know you're demonstrating to evaluators that you're aware of your positioning amongst all these other works going on. We don't want to repeat what's already been done. Um, we want to build on what's already been done. So if you can demonstrate, yes, we, we're building on something that's already done, or we're going to synergize with these people who are doing something similar, that's the type of thing we're expecting here. And you know, it depends on what you're 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 actually working on, how how much of this is necessary. But again, you just have to demonstrate this to through to the experts. Um, the experts will obviously focus mostly on the work that you're planning and the synergies are the important component to that, but perhaps not the main component. Thank you, Colm. And uh, uh, Tom Islav has a follow-up question on still on the U.S. Uh, contribution uh, contributing partners, and his question is: U.S. contributing partners are then restricted to ICOP. This is then considered uh, non-EU ICOP. Yes, yeah, so this is a bit of a, a technical <laughs> question. So ICOP is in, in kind for operational projects. Opera and I, it's it's in kind contributions and the question here is um can us contributing partners only do icop or there's another category which i won't come into here 
I mean, it would be considered non-EU, but I would really refer you with any questions on budget, I would refer you to the webinar that we uh, we had, I think it was on Tuesday and it's available on our if website. I can, can I intervene there for one second? It's Desmond. Yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, sorry, this is Desmond, I'm one of the lawyers. Um, so just in relation to this, I think it's a logical follow up. Oh, hang on a second. I'll, I'll go next door, hang on. Hey, I, I would just also like to remind you that we have a, an email address for the type of uh, rules and technical questions that you might have. Uh, and the email address is applicants at uh, iagi.europa.eu. Yeah, so we go back then to the question on the ICOP. Yeah, yeah so we just had a technical issue there. So, um, in relation to the ICOP, I think that it's a good follow on question. So, if we have someone coming from the US as a contributing partner, then yeah. there's a couple of issues that we have to take care of. So, as Colin correctly said, they will be contributing ICOP, which will be considered non EU ICOP as well. Uh, that will have to be discussed, obviously, with the consortium, but then also they can, uh, they can bring financial contributions, which all the contributing partners bring. So, the webinar on Tuesday had some useful information on differences between ICOP and the other kind of in-kind, which is the, the additional activities that um, contributing partners don't bring, um, but also the rules and procedures webinar that we had on Monday covered this in some detail as well. So I'd refer the uh, the querist to both of those webinars and further information on contributing partners can be found on the IHI website where we have a guide. It's gonna be up there in the next couple of days. There's template letters and there's more information. Thank you, Desmond. And uh, so if there's no more questions, just wait a few seconds, please use the chat function. Okay, so. But just while we're waiting, if, if there's any last minute questions, again, I'd encourage you very much to attend the pitching event, which comes on later today. These are organizations who are obviously interested in putting together consortia to address this topic. And they, sh they, they should be people you should be interested in contacting. We do have another question from Christian, and the question is, uh, can you provide a little more information on the proportion of scientific elements of the pro project proposal? For example, do you expect a full study synopsis and protocol in the proposal, and is it uh, required that the utility research be taken? Um, so the proposal template um, and your proposal itself will be limited in, in the number of pages you can submit. So there's no expectation that we have a full protocol in there, but you know you will see if you're running a clinical study, the clinical studies template will ask for some specific information, not, not a full protocol by any means. Um, you need to, for this, uh, you need to demonstrate to the evaluators that what you're proposing is credible. Part of the work of a project would then, would then be to develop on what's in your proposal and, and put together a protocol more fully. Um, on the research elements, so the research is, again, it's up to you uh, in your proposal to demonstrate that you're addressing the, the needs of the topic text. Thank you, Colm. So we'll just wait a few more seconds. Uh, Again, a reminder, all the recordings and presentations will be available on IHI's website. The, all the sessions from the previous days are already available there. I would also refer to all the documents that Colm and Desmond mentioned. So thank you everyone for joining today's session. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at the pitching session at 12.30. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.